As of 2015, over 40 million Americans live in poverty, while the richest 1% of Americans own more wealth than the bottom 90%. Given these levels of poverty and inequality, the U.S. has a variety of mechanisms in place for redistributing income, but these mechanisms are potentially leaky buckets. The government's basic approach to redistribution is to tax the rich and transfer resources to the poor. The problem is that taxes and redistribution cause leakages in Oaken's bucket. This leakage arises due to the ways in which people change their behavior to respond to both taxation and redistribution. If the government taxes wages, it lowers the return to work by reducing the opportunity cost of leisure. We saw this in the earlier lecture on labor supply, but let's review. We can graph your budget constraint with hours of leisure on the horizontal axis and units of consumption on the vertical axis. As before, we assume that one unit of consumption costs $1. So we can talk either about dollars or about units of consumption. They're now equal in value. Without government intervention, let's say you have a budget constraint with a slope of $20 per hour. Remember that this slope corresponds to the price of leisure. If you sit around and don't work, there's an opportunity cost of $20 an hour. Now suppose the government imposes a 20% tax on earnings. What happens? For an hour of work, you used to take home $20. Now you take home 20% less, or only $16. So the price of leisure has fallen. It's now less costly for you to sit around since some of what you would earn now goes to the government. This lower price of leisure means the budget constraint gets flatter. And we typically assume that a lower wage caused you to work less. Now let's use the same model to see what happens when we redistribute to the poor. Suppose we set up a program that guarantees that everyone has at least $10,000 of income. That is, if you earn less than $10,000 of income in a year, the government will consider you poor and send you a check of the amount that brings you up to $10,000. How does this impact labor supply? Let's think about this. For someone not working and making $0, they'll get a $10,000 check from the government. But if this person decides to go to work and make $8,000, he now gets only $2,000 from the government. So he still ends up with the same $10,000. He's no better off even though he worked hard to earn that $8,000. As a result, so long as leisure is a normal good, people earning below $10,000 have no incentive to keep working. They can quit, enjoy more leisure, and maintain the same $10,000 on income. In this scenario, taxes would cause workers to work less due to lower effective wage. And redistribution of workers making less than $10,000 will cause this group to leave the labor market entirely since they get the same $10,000 whether they work or not. Overall, both taxes and redistribution lead to a reduction in labor supply. Let's turn to our supply and demand graph for labor to see what this means for society. Before the tax, workers are getting this surplus here. There are workers willing to work for lower wage, but they get this higher equilibrium wage, W1. And firms are getting this surplus here. There are firms willing to pay a higher wage for these hours of labor, but they only have to pay this lower equilibrium wage, W1. The income tax and redistribution programs reduce the supply of labor. This reduction in labor supply means the labor supply curve shifts to the left. For any given wage, there is now less labor being produced in the market. Compared to before the tax, the new equilibrium wage, W2, is higher, and the new equilibrium quantity of labor, H2, is lower. The government now has tax revenue you can redistribute, represented by this rect rectangular area. The tax the government gets for each hour of labor is the difference between what the firms pay, up here at W2, and what the workers actually get after the government takes the tax, down here at W3. And the government gets this tax amount for all H2 hours of labor provided to the market. We can see that the surplus to the workers and the surplus to the firms are both smaller than they were before the tax. Worker surplus went from this triangle to this triangle. And firm surplus went from this triangle to this triangle. So we have a mechanism for moving surplus from workers and firms to the government in the form of tax revenue. But this mechanism is costly. After all the shifting around, society as a whole has lost this triangle of surplus here. This is the deadweight loss that results from redistribution.
The deadweight loss is the efficiency cost of the equity efficiency trade-off. The benefit of redistribution is that resources are moved from the rich with their low margin utility for these resources to the poor with their high margin utility for these resources. Equity improves when the bucket carries resources from the rich to the poor. The cost of redistribution is the deadweight loss incurred when the taxes and redistribution shrink the supply of labor. Efficiency suffers because the bucket is leaky. The decision of whether and how much to redistribute comes down to two things, how leaky the bucket is and how much of a leak society is willing to put up with.